is going to start. So I'm Carol Ann. I'm at Norwood. You can kind of see Heidi in the background. And Helen and Alicia are behind the controls uh, today. But I'd like to, um, first of all, welcome you, let you know that if you don't get to see the whole program today, it will be recorded and seated on the Norwood website, norwoodcommunity.org um, for future viewing. You can also go to the website and see past episodes of Meet Residents. Um, and every time you do, you'll be meeting different residents who live here. And what I'd like to do now is introduce you to today's hope or guests, um, Ron and Deb Jans. And then before we get into talking with Ron and Deb, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, look at just a little bit of an overview about Knollwood for people who might be first time visitors. Okay. So Knollwood um, community has been around for goodness a long time and has evolved over the years. Um, many people think Knollwood is a military community. It was in the 60s and 70s, but um, as, as the community evolved, um, Knollwood also evolved. Um, we are what's called a life plan community. People have to be 62 or better to live here. And we're seated in a wonderful neighborhood residential setting right on Rock Creek Park. We're surrounded by either the park or residential houses. So we're not in a business district, which people, many people seem to love. And we're a life plan community, which means that Knollwood has um, independent living, which is for people who are wise, uh, in charge, running their own household. And then we also have nursing care um, for people who are having care needs. Knollwood also has some in-between levels. Um, assisted living is for people who are starting to have some decline. And then we have the long-term uh, nursing, which is part of our nursing, as well as inpatient rehab and memory care. Okay. So now let's get to, to uh, Ron and Deb. Uh, welcome. Thank you for, for joining us today. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. And um, that's first of all, how long have you lived here? And tell us that story. We, we first saw Nolwood at uh, the end of November of last year. We came to visit a friend and we kind of fell in love with the place at that time. And we uh, found a unit we really liked in January and then spent a day or two a month here in between while we sold our house back in Minnesota. And then we've started living here full time uh, beginning of June and we've really enjoyed it. Okay. Now, Deb, did you ever work? Uh, were you ever in the military? No, I'm not. How about Ron, were you? No, I wasn't yet? in the military. Okay, so that kind of kills that myth. Um, there are a lot of people here who maybe were in the military, people here who weren't people here who have family members that might have been. Um, and for those of you who are listening, you may um, hear, may hear me asking Ron and Deb questions, but we want you to be able to key in your questions as viewers as well. So you can do that two ways. If you're a viewer, you can take your mouse and hover it along the bottom edge of your screen and you'll see either a chat section or a Q&A section. And if you click on that with your mouse, you can type in your questions for Ron and Doug. Okay. Well, first of all, what are your favorite things to do in the DC region? Not at Knollwood, but here in DC. I love the museums. We love and the fact that we can catch a bus from right from here, go to the light rail and go right downtown is incredible. I can get to the Freer Gallery within the hour. And um, Ron will tell you how much we love the Kennedy Center. Mm -hmm. And we like uh, Rock Creek Park, we're right next to it for, for bicycling, the CNO Canal, um, and just a lot of the resources. And in, in we were mostly, mostly familiar with Maryland, but Mm -hmm. So we're very close to where we used to live in Maryland. A lot of things to still do there. Mm -hmm. And so Nolwood's a real good base of operations for us to, as we go out and do other things. Yeah, we're only about four or five blocks from Maryland here. You are. Correct. You know, <laughs> we know that the Western Avenue is the DC line. We're amazed. Yes. Uh -huh. And you mentioned cycling. I just like to share with people that you're electric cyclists, right? 
We are, but I do my regular bike every week. I've been out now and I've done at least 13 miles in Rock Creek Park. Okay. I go out and you, now I don't think a lot of people realize a lot of Rock Creek is still not open to vehicles. So you're not, it's, you're not roadkill. So you can actually get on a bike and ride. <laughs> yes, yes. Beach drive, I think, is what is what. It's fantastic. So that's nice. Yeah, that's really good. What are your favorite things to do here at Norwood? Oh God, the cocktail parties, because you get to know your neighbors. So you absolutely get to sit and visit and get to know people. And I mean, that wasn't, we lived in a wonderful neighborhood in Minneapolis, but you didn't do that much socializing. You really just did. And a couple of barbecues a year. But here, every night, there's something to do if you feel like not staying in your apartment. And, and I think um, there's a men's group that I've gone to, the uh, just uh, any number of seminars and, and social things going on. It's you, you always meet somebody different, learn something new. Uh, it's there, there's you don't have to go, but there's a lot of opportunities to choose what you like, and and uh, it's been a great, it's been great. What about the men's group? Is that a religious group? No, they just get together and talk about world affairs or things. Uh, it just some camaraderie. And they, uh, there's so many uh, people have such a wide range of experiences. It's very interesting just to talk to some of the people and find out what they did, what they know, their, their views on things. It's a uh, very diverse population, very interesting. I'm sure there's a lot of hot topics the past year and a half here or in you know in our world yes. in our world in general yeah um why did you pick Knollwood out of other options you might have had in dc or maryland i had looked at other facilities for a friend and seen the size of them and um this is nothing like that it is not the isolated towers that i looked at even though they were very posh and had a lot of and they had some assisted living adjoining them this was just sort of dormitory, like communal. You know, people really came up to me in the front. They were sitting down in the lobby. They talked to me. We were just signing in to see a friend. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is very welcoming. I've never seen that in any of the large facilities. Mm -hmm. we, it was pretty much a case of we we had seen what other places had to offer, and and Nolwood was so distinctively different from that, so much better. Yeah. We kind of fell in love with it right away. Yesterday, we went on a field trip on a bus, and I'm not kidding. Oh, we went to uh, the federal shopping center, federal some oh, federal plaza, the plaza. And I want you to know, it was like a high school trip. And not only did we go shopping for two and a half hours, but we got back on the bus and showed each other what we bought. And it was men and women. I mean, it was like a high school party. What stores did people go to? Oh my gosh, we did everything from Dollar Tree to Ross's to TJ Maxx, and we also wound up, of course, at Trader Joe's. Oh, yeah. So Trader it was like a big day. We yeah. went, there wasn't enough time. We oh. really wanted to stay and hang out. So, you, had, so you use the bus, you have electric bikes. Did you bring, do you have a car? We have a car. Too. Oh yeah, okay. most people do. And we have a manual bike, my bike. So that's right. Multiple that's right. We got to give you credit where credit is I, due. I, I, no rollerblades. The rollerblades have been eliminated. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, are there? It looks like we had questions from the audience. We do. Um, you can read it, Helen. Huh? Okay. Yeah. All right. Go for it. So, so, is it easy to make friends at Knollwood? Way too easy. We barely <laughs> made it. we made it. Uh, barely made it up to this because we were hanging out with friends at breakfast. So yes, <laughs> it's impossible to do everything you want because everybody loves to talk to you and everybody loves. That's I guess the best the best part of this place is people are so friendly and so welcome. The hard part is you never get anything done. <laughs> I, I, I'd say both the staff and the residents. Oh, one. You can't pass anyone in the hallway or without them saying good morning and you saying good morning and exchanging names and pleasantries. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone is really pleasant. And incredible staff, incredible staff. Hmm. What do you like most about Norwood? Oh, that's tough. You do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think for me it's the it's freedom and independence where you it, it's we're in an independent situation but the freedom we can travel kind of choose and pick what we want to do we don't no longer have to worry about maintaining a house or shoveling snow um yeah. it's it's just 
and, and it's very interesting. It doesn't feel limiting at all. It, it, yeah. it really gives us a, a lot of opportunity. Yeah. No security system. No neighbors to pick up the mail. We don't need any of that anymore. It's all done. Right. It's amazing. You know how we had spent so much time in maintenance. I had no idea that yeah. now we have this free time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is good. Um, what would you say to viewers is that you would want them to know before they move to Norwood? What's good for them to know? I don't I don't think there's anything cautionary that I think about. It's just, it's a, another stage in your life. So if, you know, if you owned a house or you have 40 years of possessions, you need to think about how to, how to cut back a little bit. And, and you have to think about what you're going to do in the future. And, and, and the opportunities are limitless here. So yeah. we, we just had to divest ourselves mm -hmm. of some things from, from Minnesota, but then I, uh, it's, it's just moving on with another stage in your life. It's just great. Was it hard making the move from Minnesota to DC? I like think work? It was hard. The work is always getting rid of stuff, but there's also the alternative, which is to get a storage unit and put some of the things you just can't let go of right away and put it in the storage unit, move into your apartment, and then see where it goes. And if it doesn't go, then you get rid of it. And they have mm -hmm. wonderful options here to help you get rid of it. They've got this white elephant sale mm -hmm. and they'll happily take it and it will go to a good home. So, and it, and it does good for the community. So yeah, it's not as hard as everybody says. It, it really isn't. It's just, you have to take the time. The hard part is finding the time once you get here because you have so much to do when you get here. <laughs> Did you get your DC driver's licenses yet? Oh no, not yet. <laughs> oh, we're, we're working on that. Yeah. And so you have help for that. You have help. They have that's right. Yeah. There, uh, some people on the staff gave us lots of pointers. We have to get our car inspected and fill out the application, do do a few other things. So we're we're in the process of working on that. But there's been a been a lot of guidance, so we won't won't get lost in their system. We have an amazing coaching staff. So to kind of piggyback off of what you said, what kind of help do you get at Knollwood? Oh gosh, oh, really? they give you computer help, uh, assistance in becoming a resident in DC. Um, oh my gosh, get when all the furniture arrives in boxes, somebody's up there to help you get it out, get it out and get it picked up. And there isn't anything that you can't get help with. I mean, absolutely nothing, nothing. And so it's just amazing. It's it's like being in college, you know, they're all there to help you because they want to get you settled. That's right. Yeah. Move in college, yeah. move in day. It's like it's like a dorm. I'm telling you, it's great. I tell everybody this is like living on a cruise ship because everybody takes care of you. It really is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And when you're saying taken care of, you're not talking about helping you get dressed or showered or not medication. It's no. the little things yeah. that count. Like, what do I do with all the junk I hauled along? And, and how do, oh, and my microwave doesn't work and you get a new one. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> You're not ready for that. If you tell them there's a light bulb that flickers, somebody comes and changes it. Mm -hmm. This is hard. I think we've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. It sounds like you're you're uh, you're getting the kind of help. Yes. That yeah. you want. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, I have another question. Ooh. Okay. How did you both come to the agreement to move? Well, we were both here at the same time and we loved it and made it easy. So okay. we, but we, some we, couples. Yes, we had we had uh, some customers who one spouse is a little bit more on the fence. Any tips or recommendation on how to overcome that or help their spouse overcome that? Have they been here to visit both of them? That's a good tip. Have they Coming been in here? person? Yeah, it was the it, it's itself. Because when we came that day to have lunch with our friend, we were absolutely fortunate that and someone from marketing was here. And we didn't even get the tour. We just saw a couple of partners who said, we'll take it. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, we were just loved mm -hmm. walking through the building and seeing the apartment. Some people, but, though, aren't maybe aren't as decisive as you do. Yeah, like, right. what would you suggest for a couple who's at odds? Um, well, I, I think for we've been discussing what we were going to do for a few years. We, we had a nice house and 
and we, we lived in Minneapolis and we were very happy there. But we kind of knew that looking forward, that wasn't going to, you know, we said in five years or 10 years, where do we want to be? And so that's when we started looking at some different options and things, not in a hurried way, but just keeping our eyes open. And, and so over a period of a couple of years, we knew we were going to be looking for a change. Um, you're right, you have to you have to get together on that. I mean, there wasn't any kind of what made us feel good about this move was that we recognized that we weren't ill or that we were, were still at a case where we're fairly independent uh, and, and resilient and able to do a lot of things. And we thought maybe it's a good idea to make a change while we're, while we're still in good shape and then adapt to, to the new situation as we get older. Because, um, so, so I think it's, it's good to be proactive. You don't have to be, you know, snap decisions. But it's good to be proactive in what do you want out of life and where do you want to be in a few years and, and then compare that vision versus what this really offers. And for us, it was a really good match. We do have people who um, kind of wait too long thinking oh, yeah. that they could move here when they need help or when they're declining, not realizing that that's not when you're going to be, you know, eligible you can decline after you're here and and you've probably you probably have already met residents in two generations you've probably met people younger than you and older than you That's already correct. Uh, yeah and here's a good point someone said to me now two women have said this to me two of them since we've been here and that is they were so happy that they came while their spouses had good health so they had a few years here together before they lost their spouses mm -hmm. people don't realize that mm -hmm. If you don't have that type of support system in place, when that loss occurs, then all of a sudden you're forced to think about where does the house go? Where do I move? Here, they have everything in place. They have all of you to turn to. You can help them transition to whatever space they needed. That has to be done ahead of time. You can't do that, as you said, at the last moment. It's a critical, critical issue. And whoever the other one is holding back, you've got to think about that. That's very good. Very good advice. It's harder for us. We see things, but yeah. it's harder for us to give advice because we're not peer to peer. No. And we haven't experienced it. No. no. You've experienced it, and these yeah. are your peers. Yeah. Yeah. No. That are watching. Yeah. yeah. They share it with us. They don't share that with you. Correct. Yeah. Are there more? Any more questions? Not at this time. Not at this time. At this time. Okay. Yeah. Well. Um, what would what do you see as things that you might be doing in the next year that you haven't um, done? Is, is there anything new you plan on doing while going you're to here? Going to the beach next week. Are you? Mm -hmm. and then, uh, yeah, oh yeah, and then we're to Hawaii in October. Oh, we're all, we don't have to worry about the apartment. We can go now. So you know, beach next week, Hawaii in October. I'm going to go to London in December if they let us into the country. Um, all kinds of places, travel, travel, travel. This is the place to do it from. Mm -hmm. All right. What? Now, what are you going to, what do you, so Ron, that's her, what, what, something new, right? What is your something new that you plan on doing? Um, well, Debbie lets me go with her. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's how, that's always, um, no, it, for, for me, uh, Nothing exactly new. I think we're planning some other trips, but uh, I'm going to go back to Minnesota and go fishing in September. So I get to, do you I get fly fishing or do uh, you not fly fishing? Fishing for walleye. So it's, Ooh, it's, uh, lake. And, and there's uh, a very nice lake in northern Minnesota we go to. So partly it's continuing to do some of the, being able to continue to do some of the things we haven't done before. Um, I think that's a really good point because I think a lot of people. Think about, oh gosh, I have to give up stuff. Oh no. You have your life and you brought it with you. And we can do more. We don't have to worry about the water in the lawn anymore. We don't have to worry about the, the you know, uh, the security of the house or the, the mail. We, don't, we just close the door and let you know we're gone. And I hear a leaf blower outside right now. <laughs> and that That's is right. so nice. You don't know. <laughs> we sit every day when we get our lunch, it includes a dessert. And we take that ice cream out and sit on the patio or the back of Knoll House, which has a beautiful patio. Mm -hmm. 
and we sit there and eat our ice cream. <laughs> so to piggyback off of what you said a little bit, you mentioned getting ice cream. Do you guys eat at the bistro here a lot? Do you cook in your apartment, a little bit of both? Do you go out to eat at restaurants yeah. in D.C.? Every meal downstairs, we, we love the food. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a kitchen. Yeah. But we're not using it. We've done a little bit of all of it. We've, we've gone to a couple restaurants in the area, uh -huh. some that we used to go to, and, and so we're rediscovering those some new ones. We, uh, we've cooked a few meals in the apartment, but overall we, we we tend to eat two meals a day rather than three. And we like the freedom of the bistro. The food's really good. We have a nice breakfast in the morning yeah. and then one one other meal later in the day. And and so far we've been enjoyed the offerings there. Um, and and uh, we usually eat down there. Sometimes we bring the food. We have the option of bringing the food back up yeah, to the room, yeah. or even going out. Uh, we we've, we've gotten hamburgers some days and go out and just have a picnic at one of the tables outside. So there's um, we we basically like the freedom to choose. And What's your? You mentioned. Oops, I'm sorry. No, I would want to show you. Before I forget, the price is so incredible. I cannot buy food yeah. for the prices that you have. I mean, really, I mean, the breakfast alone, which is what, $2.40, we split because it's so much food. And then lunchtime, I mean, it's unbelievable. Then we get this ice cream, too. I mean, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we had to give up a third meal. <laughs> oh, because of the ice cream? Or I'm going to be paying Weight Watchers at the end of the month because I'm living here. And we met new residents on our floor. And the first thing the wife said to me is, we can't eat downstairs. The three meals a day, she says, we're gaining weight like crazy. <laughs> so we have to deal with that adjustment. <laughs> now, you mentioned going back to some restaurants you used to go to when you lived here years ago. I just have to know, what are they? Um, see if I need to add them to my oh, list. Manoli, cannoli. Oh, Manoli, cannoli. Oh, up on Connecticut Avenue. On Connecticut. Uh -huh. we, we knew, we were, the we left in 2001. So okay. the late 90s, we'd go there a lot. And mm -hmm. The owner was an elderly Italian fellow. He's quite a character. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he's not there right now, but his picture's on the wall and they have mm -hmm. some of the same things. So Manoli, cannoli. There's sushi a, place, a, a sushi place in Rockville. And a dip sum, dip sum, how you say it, dim sum. Dim sum place, the in, Golden Fountain in, in Gaithersburg. In oh, oh there's great. There's, oh, yeah, I was amazed. And you have the most wonderful Indian food out there in a place called the Commonwealth. Commonwealth cuisine. Oh, yeah. What town is that in? It's on Georgetown. It is Old the, Georgetown Road. It is off so of elegant. Oh, okay. it's such a beautiful place. Unbelievable. So, I have a favorite Indian restaurant on Wisconsin Avenue, um, right next to La Chat Noir. Um, I, can, I can never remember the name of the Indian it's restaurant. It's hard, isn't it? But I, but I remember the name of the French well, restaurant. So it's right next door. And we have a field trip going to a French restaurant next week. Oh, which one? Uh, we're having our orientation that day. We asked for 15 minutes off so we can get on the bus and go with the gang of the truck. Oh, restaurant. probably to maybe La Ferme? Because mm -hmm. it's close. I have no idea. It's going to be great. Yeah. Okay. Like, I mean, think about it. We get field trips to country club restaurants. We get field trips to local restaurants. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the galleries, I missed Renwick last week because I had to be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I mean, shopping. I mean, you don't have to drive. You really don't have. And there, we were with a resident yesterday who said, I have to give up my car. I'm not going to drive anymore. And she said, I feel like I'm giving up my independence. I said, here, I don't think you'll miss it. And she said, I know. That's what's making it easy. But she doesn't have to drive anymore. That's a significant statement. I know the M4 bus um, has right. returned after COVID and comes right to the front door now. To the door. I never dreamed that would happen to me. Yeah. And we've been on it several times. You're one of your big users. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where do you take it? Where do yeah. you go? Uh, the trip, the first trip we took was we took the bus to the subway station, subway station to the airport, and then we traveled. Um, uh, a week or so ago, there was actually one of the field trips for residents. They, we we all got on one of the one of the Norwood buses and went and got our senior subway cards, and uh, and, and so uh, mostly uh, the bus take it to tend the, tend the town. There's some restaurants and stores there. And Target. There, yeah. There's a container store. Does it go um, on the Carver Boulevard to the restaurants along there too, or not? No, I think no. It, it passes some restaurants in Connecticut and yeah. is it Arizona or Nevada? I'm not 
Oh, Nebraska, I mean. Nebraska. Nebraska. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, and, and shops. And, and, and shops, yeah. some shops. Some there. stores there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah have you, great access. Yeah, that's a good great access. access. Yeah. You know, yeah. And so we really like that, too. So we have Because I said to Ron, well, we'll come back here, because we always had two cars living here. I said, we have to get a second car. And I have not bugged him once about a second car. Oh, so you scratch that. So you don't want, nowadays, I don't think you want a second yeah. car. No, Looking at the no, news, it's, it's, what, that's they right. what they're saying, the yeah. pricing is oh, crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and that's why we kept our older car, because we didn't need to get a new car here, because this one's working just fine for the little we use it. Do you take your electric bikes or your manual bike anywhere, you know, bike shopping or not? Just we use have, your... We have not. We're at, because we can't really shop, we don't need food, basically, and... Um, and so I manual just for fun, just to go up and down Fox Creek because it's so beautiful. I mean, covered with those trees, it's cool when it's 90. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we haven't really, and I think I have to tell you, I forgot how hilly it is here. I'm, I'm a little scared to learn to ride my electric bike on a hill yet till I get comfortable. I'm still a manual. I know how to break on the manual. And that's electrical. But we're taking them out. We've already talked about it. We're going to take it out in the parking lot and get used to them because you're new. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, we're very excited. What was I going to say? And I'm going, I got snowshoes. I know we could snowshoe up. You wouldn't want to bad, no? <laughs> if you have enough snow, snow. Have enough snow. yeah. yeah. So, I, even on the first day, I'll be out there on the first snow. So yeah. yeah. And I got yeah. an extra pair for you, Carol. So I have two pair of my own, but yeah. I use them up in New England, oh, not no, here. <laughs> yeah, um, you might be, you know, a sled might come in handy one or two days. That's good enough for but me. But you might not have, because a lot of people sled on the hill um, that's behind Knoll House. Oh, sure. It gets good in January. I love yeah. it. Yeah. It's wonderful to see that. I know. <laughs> that's the nice thing. I see so many, because we don't have children of our own, but we see so many residents with grandchildren and their daughters walking in the hall. I have my prior experience as a social worker, because I worked in nursing homes and different life uh, kind of uh, living situations. I've never seen so much family around as I see here. Mm -hmm. Really, it is surprising. Mm -hmm. It must be because it's so pleasant and the dining room so open. It's just people are everywhere. It really is. It's busy. I think a lot of people, like some people I know, move here from out of the area because they have family in this area. And then some people move here because they don't want to leave DC. You know, they want the, the life of the city, but they want the quietness of our neighborhood because we're not in the throng of, of any mayhem or yeah. you know, crazy raucous late nights here, unless you, you could find it if you want to seek it out. And you have gorgeous guest apartments. I have looked at both of them mm -hmm. and I can't make up my mind whether I want to stay at Knoll House with my guests or stay here in the residence. I mean, it is just lovely lovely facilities and the way you could take them into the dining room and eat with them you can't eat that you mm -hmm. just can't it makes it easy to have company it does it does well i don't want any right now i want the freedom <laughs> to play but as soon as i'm ready to calm down you know, i'll think about it <laughs> yeah are there things that you would like to see here at home that aren't currently here there I haven't really, yeah, I haven't we're, you know, in a sense, we're fairly new, but I haven't seen anything obvious that, no, that I'm missing out on. We should do more, but we can't. <laughs> I have made it to the art classes and stuff like that. I mean, I don't, we've signed up for a bunch of stuff, but we're, it's tight because he has to remind me of all the commitments we've made. So, no, not yet. Do you like art? Are you an art? No, are you an artist already, I or an back. artist in, in the college? Making? I started as an art major and realized I could not support myself that way. <laughs> and yeah. so, but it has been a good, you know, fifty years. But I still have my watercolors, and I still like to throw pots on a wheel. But I haven't had a chance. And you have a kill here. How many places can you live and they have a kill? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I can't. You know, so they talked about maybe eventually getting back to some art classes like that. And you have, you have a library. You have an incredible library. You have a beautiful uh, crafts room. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just too busy. Mm -hmm. I mean, people watch movies all the time in the movie room. Um, I even found out you had an auditorium downstairs. I didn't know yeah. that. Who has an auditorium? Mm -hmm. I'm unbelievable. Um, and I also see the people playing bridge. I have been Marsha, and I walked into a Marsha game on the first floor the other day. Mm -hmm. And so it's amazing. Oh, and then other resources. I mean, you're in Washington, D.C., the D.C. library. And just a couple of weeks ago, there was a, they had a class here. They had somebody from the library who came out and taught those of us who were interested how to, gave us the library card, taught us how to access 
their digital resources. Mm -hmm. and, and so- Do you get it, free newspapers from the library card? Uh, digi digitally, yeah. I, can, I can actually read the New York Times and the Washington Post on their digital subscription. Mm -hmm. so, and plus there's, uh, those are the ones I read, but I, I, there's a whole list of papers through the library you can mm -hmm. get. Uh, borrow books electronically, magazines. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's a case that's a regional resource or a city resource, yeah. but but it's again where the staff at Knollwood and the library actually reach out and help us yeah. to use that. Uh, so that's great. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. Um, how are we doing on time? Are we within our window or are we, we doing are, over? We are good. It's just about 1030 right now. Okay. So that's good. Yeah. So um, is there anything you thought I might ask the two of you or that you thought the viewers might ask that didn't? Not really for, for me. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, making a life change, moving to, it's such a personal decision. Um, it, it's hard to anticipate what people need, but uh, it, I, I think it, the good thing about Knollwood in this area, it, uh, if you come in with your eyes open, you, you could be surprised at all it has to offer. Mm -hmm. And it's really, some, sometimes there's the feeling that as you get older and move away from your house, you're limiting yourself. And, and actually I feel it's, it's been much, it's not limiting, it's much more freeing. And, and in some ways, we're busier now than we Ever. than we were before. Mm -hmm. so. Besides getting fueled up with coffee, what do you do to keep your energy up? Do you like more coffee? Oh no, I'm <laughs> I'm doing real good. I, okay. That un, unlimited supply of caffeine works for me. Okay. I think what you have to think about is the diversity of your residents. You have recruited people from every possible walk of life with every possible interest, which is remarkable to see this kind of a community. Um, I didn't find that in the other ones to be evident, but here, I mean, I have just been amazed how wonderful and how open people are about their life experiences, where they've grown up. I mean, I found out the people that work here are from Minnesota. I had no hope with this morning at breakfast when the people from your business end stopped by to tell us just, we were actually going up to the same resort that she stayed at with a family reunion in Minnesota, in you know, in Vermilion. I mean, on the, and of course the uh, overall CEO, he's from minutes from where we live in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just wonderful that there's so many of you. Um, I found people from New York. It's great. I mean, that is really a plus that you have something in common with the people you live with. You know, that's just it's great. You think being in DC helps with that diversity? Like, is it in a, is D, DC? I, is I think diverse. partly DC does. It's it's a working community, and it's mm -hmm. it brings a lot of people and ex, with different backgrounds and expertise together. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think it's always been much more cosmopolitan. Yeah. yeah. It's a big little, it's a little big city. Yes, it yeah, is. It's a little, it's big, a little city. big city. Except right? when you think of the DC, Baltimore region. Oh yeah, that's a with, big, With big more city. people in the state of Minnesota, so. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, and Virginia is really close too, right over that's the, right. That's right, right over the, the bridge. And do you realize we can get in a car and take a few hours ride and be at the ocean? Mm -hmm. That's true. Do you that's imagine true. how fun that is? And there's yeah. tons of places to stay out there. Mm -hmm. So if you want a quick vacation, it's two or three hours away. Which town are you going to when you go? Hobbit. Okay. Nice. Oh, that's nice. It's a little yeah. hotel, not mm -hmm. even expensive. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to walk around and do some visiting, you know, check out some B&Bs. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that we missed in Minnesota. I mean, we can go up north five hours mm -hmm. to get close to water. I mean, there's water all around us. But yeah. not oceans me, and beaches. Yeah, yeah. Beaches, beaches, white beaches. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been to Hawaii many, many times. And what they call beach is volcanic rock. And and you know and and dust. Mm -hmm. I mean, the white beaches along the eastern shore is amazing, you know. So yeah, we're excited about being back mm -hmm. here. And then and, and you can talk to any resident who will give you. I've already found out where to go in the hall with what to do. I mean, it's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, you get all the help you want when you just say, "Well, I'm going to go here," and all of a sudden you got ten people telling you, "Well, I've got a couple names for you." 
So yeah, it's fun. Yeah. All right. Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to show the viewers a little bit about what's coming up. And if any viewer has a last minute question, key it in. Um, but we're going to do is um, give the viewers a little bit of information about upcoming at Knollwood. Um, and the viewers can also look at knollwoodcommunity.org um, at any time. Um, our upcoming events, we have another webinar next month, and it's focusing on real estate. And we have a local realtor who will be coming in onto our webinar and sharing a little bit about the more about the immediate market. So D.C., Maryland, probably touch on Virginia as well. Um, and I know everything about interest rates and housing market is all in the news. So um, she's very well respected. Uh, and will be with us. And then I believe the day after that, NOAA has an in-person event. It is about advanced planning, right-sizing, you know, to prepare sure. for a future relocation. Um, we want people, people need to call in an RSVP. So they would want to call um, our phone number, which is on the screen now, which is 202-541-0149. Or they could also email us, and that can be done through our website. So if you go to the Knollwood website, knollwoodcommunity.org, and want to learn about the right sizing and relocation event, um, we're inviting people to come to that as well. There will be many consultations, and it's going to be hands-on. It's not just going to be somebody talking at you. Um, probably the, I think you gave great advice come and tour Knollwood. And if you're a couple, both of you come together. Yes. Heidi, Helen, and I, that's what we do on most days. We don't host webinars every day. We usually meet with people one-to-one -to, -one, uh, to show them around. Um, so, you know, give Heidi, Helen, or myself a call. And even if you've looked before, maybe it's been a couple years, or maybe there was something you didn't get to see, call us and we will help out. So I think I think that's an over and out. Are there any last minute questions, Helen? Are we good to go? No, just say thanks for the great experience and sharing so much of the great information. Okay, so we got some thank yous from thank the viewers. Okay, bye, bye everybody. Bye. <laughs>